Hi everyone, this is a composition that I call Root Veil. There's another video featuring just the composition itself available here on the Dangerous Fishbowl channel, which has been linked in the description. This is the technical overview. So Root Veil is a mythical place in the back of my mind where the roots of short trees lining the rocky bank of a creek meander into the creek and ultimately into the gravel at the bottom of the creek and they've become intertwined with vegetation and thousands of fish are dancing to and fro between the roots of the trees and the vegetation fighting against the current and the bubbles in the stream. The roots of root bale, as it were, go back to 1986. I loved to visit a particular aquarium shop when I was growing up in Hong Kong. Now, most of the tanks in the shop were not particularly well maintained which is why I somewhat affectionately called the owner of the store Mrs. Bacteria. She was a Chinese lady, very charming, and I didn't want to say that to her face, but when I was talking to my mother, I would say, Mom, I'm going to Mrs. Bacteria's to have a look at the fish. But in her defense, Mrs. Bacteria was actually quite a talented aquarist. She had on display in the middle of her shop a 15-gallon hex tank, hexagon tank, just like this tank. But it was it was a marine composition, and I and I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's the most beautiful saltwater composition I've seen in such a unique form factor. I wonder if I could do something so uplifting in freshwater. Twenty eight years later, in two thousand fourteen, I was fortunate enough to have that opportunity. I found this used hex tank. It's a thirty seven gallon. Uh, I found it online. I bought it secondhand along with the stand. I didn't produce anything new in a factory. So here we are, about 150 to 160 liters. It's a height of about 22 inches, you know, so something around 50 centimeters tall. And basically, the, what's unique about it is that like a cylinder, like a glass cylinder, you can get a 360 degree perspective. I've, I've actually papered off the back with, with black paper, so you can only get it from five sides. But nevertheless, it's, it's a sweeping view of root veil. And it's, it's, it's a little bit different than having a cylinder tank, though, because you don't get the visual distortion, right? You get a straight-on view times five. But it's also unlike a rectangular type of tank in that you get these angle views, which is covered uh, pretty comprehensively in visual detail in the composition video. So one of the reasons that I think that hex tanks have sort of become extinct in the hobby is that not only do we have uh, cylinder bowls with all of their advantages in cylinder tanks now, um, but quite frankly, they were always designed too tall. So at this height, light penetration is very faint to the bottom. As you're watching it here, it's, it's actually in moonlight mode. So that means that the lights are turned down a bit, but even so, uh, when they're at full blast, as they are in the composition video, um, there's no way I could really grow any carpeting plants on the bottom. So I have a lot of eel grass, a, a lot of Vallisneria. Um, there's a, a species of Vallisneria that I've happened to find while hiking through uh, kind of a stream area in Florida, and I've never seen it anywhere else. And that is what is populating this tank. I call it Dwarf Vallisneria, or Dwarf Val for short. And uh, dwarf val, as the name suggests, never never grows really to the top of my tank. It's very it's very rare. You know, I'll get a leaf or two that'll make it up that high. But but generally, it's somewhere uh, between the the height of a tall Echinodurus uh, tenellus carpeting plant and a jungle val. And of course, I, I do actually have one piece of jungle val somewhere back there. But jungle val actually is a problem in a hex tank because it will tend to form a canopy over the surface that blocks all the light and prevents plant growth. So I, I try to keep my jungle val to, to a minimum. Dwarf val won't do that, which is one reason I love it. The other reason I love it is because it grows like crazy and it eats up tons of waste products very efficiently. Um, and then of course up in the back I do have uh, pennywort. I've actually trimmed the vast majority of that uh, recently. Um, and it will form a canopy, and so I, I have to be careful, again, to keep things trimmed. Um, and as you can see, I have some radican swords. The one, the one here on the front towards center right is actually, uh, I think it's an Echinodurus, but that's strange because I found it in a, in a spring in Florida. So it seems to be doing really well in, in my 8.5 or so alkaline water. Let me, let me actually show you another perspective. Um, we'll just switch the camera over here. 
There we go. So basically now you're, you're kind of looking at it angle on, and that gives you a little bit more perspective into, into, the, uh, into the composition. Um, and by, by the way, one of the things about hex tanks that, that people do find annoying at first is that you get this, this kind of fractured image and, and it's sort of mentally, you know, hard to deal with that because you, you're seeing things double, like if you look at the angles and it can be a bit visually frustrating at first. But I'll tell you what, after some adaptation, it, 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 your brain just seamlessly processes it and it doesn't, it, it's no longer intrusive. So it just, it just allows you to produce a really beautiful meditative composition like this where the, where the light intensity actually dims visibly as you approach the bottom. Um, and it's, it's a perfect form factor like for the end of a hall where I have it or you know, in the corner of a, of a room. Um, it's the, the filtration system in here, by the way, is uh, white pumice filtration, not to be confused with red pumice filtration, totally different. I actually have a video all about white pumice filtration and the advantages and disadvantages linked in the YouTube description. Now, one of the great things, perhaps the greatest thing about white pumice filtration is after it cycles for a few weeks, it can actually keep your tank crystal clear. And more importantly, it can do that for months. I literally had this connected to the... Uh, canister filter for five months before I actually had to uh, clean out the filter. Um, and uh, so it's a very, very low maintenance uh, way of running an aquarium. And it's certainly a low waste way of running an aquarium because there's, there's no filter material to throw out. There's no carbon that you have to buy or anything. Um, there's certainly no chemicals you have to add apart from obviously the usual dechlor and ammonia remover. Um, so, so the white pumice filtration keeps the water pretty much this clear uh, for months at a time. Um, and of course, I, I have my usual helper crew, right? I've got my uh, Jordanella floridae, my American flagfish uh, to eat the hair algae. I've got uh, a bristlenose catfish, otherwise known as an ancestress catfish. Actually, I have two of them. Um, and one of them <laughs> seems to want to live in a shell in, in the bottom uh, kind of full time, uh, even though I try to coax him out with algae wafers. That's where he wants to live. So, okay. Um, I have a little yo-yo loach who goes around and uh, sucks up snail eggs. So he helps control my snails. Um, and then of course, the, the, the most important feature of the tank is, is all the tetras. You know, there are obviously cardinal tetras here and ember tetras and silver tetras and uh, glow light tetras and blood fin tetras uh, and some silver tip tetras, you know, and, uh, and then I also have some purple hats, which I, I think are resboras, but don't quote me on that. Um, but all in all, it's, it's just a very cohesive composition. There's there's a, a root, uh, which is sort of more visible in the composition video, um, which runs from the upper left back all the way to the left uh, foreground on the bottom. And it's this beautiful arch and you can see the fish kind of swim under it sometimes. And the, the, the plant leaves get entwined around it. And it's just, it's just really, uh, it, 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 it's a sinew of the whole muscle as it were that ties the composition together. Um, the lighting, for its part, is uh, there are two 18-inch um, uh, beams work, 6,500 Kelvin LEDs. So these are not actinic; they're not blue. They just have moonlight mode and normal mode. Um, the power head is a National Geographic. Um, I like to support them, but it's essentially a rebranded re Eheim power head, um, which has uh, an aeration supply and obviously uh, supplies current. And water circulation in a in a hex tank is somewhat challenging because of the shape. So I, I have it. Uh, you know, going around in a sort of circle shape, um, as as I do with the filter outlet. So I get actually a really good current going, uh, going clockwise. If you're looking down at the top, but um, all in all, um, it's just a, a place of peace. That's uh, just a just a wonderful meditative addition to the home. Um, and the the only other thing I would say is that uh, it, as you can see in some of the, the photos on the competition page, and this is a 2015 Aquatic Gardeners Association competition entry, and I'll, I'll link to that in the description. But as you can see in, on those pages a little bit, and also I think in the composition video, um, I have phylodendrons. That, that is like, a, some people call it money plant, right? Growing out of the top of the tank in the back that actually hide all the hoses and cables so that uh, when you're when you're walking into the hallway, all you see is this is this beautiful aquarium with philodendron dripping down the sides, and and then this beautiful lush place called Rootvale. Thanks for watching.